Welcome back to Idology, your weekly American Idol recap show fueled by Chris Allen song leaks. This week we've got season six star Melinda Doolittle in the house. We're going to talk about the end of season 11 Hollywood week, the legendary Vegas round, and the fact that it contained over 50 different singers performing. That's more than five times what Randy Jackson can count to using his fingies. It might have been a little much for me. He's quite simple-minded. Poor thing. I'm all excited about this season of Idol now just from watching these two episodes. Yeah, it's amazing what four hours of TV can do, even just two hours of TV, frankly. The Thursday episode really was the one that got me in full-fledged Idol fever. <laughs> Let's talk just for a quick second about Wednesday night's show. Wednesday was sort of significant for introducing us to Joshua Lede, who tackled oh. Hit 'em Up style in the group rounds. That goes the love I had, but you cheated on me. That one lady. And then followed it up with his solo on Jar of Hearts. Who do you think you are? Running around leaving stars. Is it just me? Because I know he's sort of a love him or hate him contestant right now. I'm a huge fan. I've watched both his group performance and his solo performance multiple times already. Right. He's got a range like none other. And then it's really clear at the top, which I wasn't expecting because it has a little bit of rasp kind right. of in the middle of it. He keeps pulling stuff out that I'm like, whoa, that's amazing. A lot of readers on TV line have thrown out the term Lusky Stank. <laughs> I hate to go there so soon with Joshua, but there were moments on Jar of Hearts. <laughs> but I never thought he took it all the way. And I think as long as Randy doesn't say things like, you know, throw everything you've got against the wall every week. Don't hold back, Jacob, ever. Go for it, baby. I know that the instinct is to give it all you've got the entire time, but hopefully he can hold on to just being able to rein it in just a little bit. I also thought Wednesday night's episode was interesting because it was the return of Jennifer Lopez's baby as a word that has like a red flashing siren going around it. Yes. When we saw oh. poor falling girl Imani just staggering and limping her way through it, and then she falls down on stage, I thought, you know, for sure they're gonna put her through because she got up there in the midst I of know. a fainting spell. And then JLo was like, baby. Baby, I'm sorry, you're going home. Oh dear, what an awkward situation. <laughs> And I was like, no, she didn't just baby her. But what I was most disturbed about is our little friend, Johnny Kaiser. Mm. I was more disturbed <laughs> about the fact that she like collapsed <laughs> on the ground and, he's and like, he hey. kind of just stepped around her and kept singing. The last time, the last time. Dude, Ryan Seacrest has run out on stage. You just shut it down at this point. So Melinda, Joshua Lede is obviously a breakout from This Week in Idol. I know you also liked Jen Hirsch, and I think she got a lot of screen time, and I'm almost sold on her, but let's talk about her for a minute. I absolutely love her. That girl's voice is so powerful, so controlled. It can do just about anything. I loved her Georgia on my mind that she started it so, I described it in my recap as like a Reiki massage. Like she she barely even touched it. Other eyes smile tenderly. There's so much restraint, and then, yes. you know, when she explodes, the voice is huge. <laughs> I thought in her group performances, she maybe got just to the outer edge of a scream on a couple of notes. <laughs> She was the only girl in that group, and so she was having to sing so high because they were trying to make these harmonies. So by the end of the song, I mean, any woman would be screaming to be strong and be at the end of that, you know, and just power through. We also have to talk about, to me, a performance at Vegas that has to be in the 10 best Hollywood Week slash Vegas Week performances of all time. It's DeAndre Brackensick, Candace Glover, and Jessica Sanchez. When I saw Jessica, she's this tiny sprite, and she's got like a ponytail that you'd see on toddlers and tiaras, and I thought, oh man, like this is gonna be a disaster, but no. I'm super excited about her. She is a little powerhouse, and to be so young and to make such amazing choices. And she and DeAndre were working the hairography. He's giving you a little bit Millie Vanilli in the looks department, but musically, he sort of takes it back to like Maxwell and D'Angelo and oh. that sound that's kind of missing right now. <laughs> Crazy, yeah. 
my friend and I, we kept going back and forth between whether he was Kenny G or Black Jesus. And so we came up with Kenny Jesus. And I actually think that Kenny Jesus is amazing. The only bad thing about that group performance is that Candace did not make the top 42. I had to hit pause and walk out of the room. Candace, I'm sorry, baby. Thank you. She was down in that song. Like, she dug a ditch and she got into the ditch. You go your way, baby. I'll go mine. I have to give some credit to Michael Orland and Pisha McPhee for that arrangement of the song because it gave them room to sing like none other. So that helped them by far. But they had to be able to step up to the plate and deliver, and they did. I think the other reason that I'm still sort of smarting from Candace and from J-Ron getting cut is there's a few people that I would have just swept clean the minute they were done with their group performances. And I know you had a couple people that you weren't so high on either. Can we start with Brielle then? We can. Actually, can we start with Brielle's mom? Not since Dina Lohan have we seen <laughs> someone harm their daughter's reputation like this. I'll have to deal with her when she comes back to the room. And Brielle is not my favorite vocalist. So I went to Neiman Marcus on a shopping spree. But she's really not my favorite because her mom, some of the stuff that she's saying, I'm like, you can't do that. The weakest voice is opening the act. And she's not delivering when she gets on stage. There's a bleat in her voice that reminds me a little bit of Michaela Gordon. There's a big okay. voice there, but it has problems. Why do they if I was a song called Love Will Lead You Back, I would be hiding in a closet trembling because I think Brielle is coming for that song at some point <laughs> if she makes it through to the live round. In the Vegas rounds, I would have cut all the Elvis guys. Every single one. Okay, maybe it's wrong to say this about a group of white guys with brown hair, but I couldn't tell any of them apart. Okay, that makes me feel so much better. I don't think any of them did the song justice, did themselves justice. The outfits didn't help. No. Um, the ponytails didn't help. The weird cheesy dancing didn't help. I couldn't believe that they actually picked one person to go. Sorry, dude, it's the end of the line for you, bro. I think that the whole group should either go or stay. We can just end your sentence on go. This is gonna be mean, but I would have also cut Eben Frankowitz. I felt like Eben's voice, I don't know, it's not there yet. I'm begging you, please stop playing games. Maybe his voice is changing. He felt a little bit like the weak link in both of those groups. Your game. And I feel like if you can't stand out in a group of four or five people, maybe you need two or three more years before you make the big show. You hit the nail on the head. He probably needs a couple more years. I love him. I think he's the cutest thing in the world, but he just, he doesn't have control completely over his voice. Yeah. So he just needs a little more time because it's actually a beautiful voice. That means he's gonna make it all the way through to like number seven or eight at, exactly. at, the, at the expense <laughs> of all of our favorites. There's also another duo that you and I agreed probably should have been cut right after they were done. But a lot of TV line readers disagreed with me on half of this relationship, and that's Richie the Cowboy and Jermaine. I just didn't get what was going on with that performance. I sat there listening to it, and then they were like, oh, we loved it, it was so dreamy, it's a different sound. If by different you mean kind of like cacophonous and unpleasant, okay. Both of their tones kind of have like this um, almost Kermit the Frog overage to it, you know? Just kind of goes, oh. I'm a Muppet, well, I'm a very manly Muppet. They needed their Miss Piggy to make it work. I'm already doing a duet with my new dance partner. Hola. But I feel like Richie is being set up for a takedown because he was like rude about Deborah Bird oh. being like, I didn't come here to recycle music, I came here to make it. Bird is my girl, number one. And she is so genius, has been on the show since the beginning. So if anybody knows what to do with a song, it would be Bird. I feel like those two should be reassigned to Peggy Blue and have their scenes reshot. What you don't do is listen. Now sing it again. Put Jessica Phillips in there, because who knew that, that that stank attitude was bubbling up underneath? I know she's been through a lot, but when she was like, uh, it, it doesn't shocker. seem like they're looking for real artists. What is that saying about the two girls that they did let through standing right next to you right now? Even if it's going through your head, why would you say it? You know, you're on TV. You're not on the internet like us. <laughs> I say whatever comes to my mind, but I'm not on TV. This is what I'm saying. <laughs>